I'm Kate Lacey, a photographer based in Brooklyn, New York, and I've always loved dogs. As a freelance photographer, people always ask me what my favorite assignment was. And without hesitation, I always answer photographing the Westminster Dog Show for Life magazine. So I knew I had to turn this project into a book. I thought photographing show dogs was going to be easy when I first started out because you see them in the ring and they're so poised and seem so well behaved. But they come to the set and they're just like our dogs at home. You know, they're puppies and they're energetic and they dance and they're nervous and they're cranky. And there's all sorts of good smells that they're curious about. And a lot of times they're tired. You know, being a show dog is exhausting. There's a lot of preparation and stress and things that go into it. Um, so they would arrive on my set and sometimes they just were yawning and wanted to take a nap. We set out on the ambitious task of photographing 170 dog breeds. The first batch of pictures came from that initial assignment at the Westminster Dog Show, which takes place at Madison Square Garden. It's the biggest event in the show dog world. I was lucky enough to be able to set up a little mini studio that took the dogs out of that chaos. One of the things I wasn't prepared for was how big some of the dogs are. Like the giant schnauzer got on the set and he barely fit on my four foot roll of set paper. The solution to that problem was to zoom in. It ended up becoming the defining look for the rest of the project. After the Westminster Dog Show, I had 16 images that I was really happy with. Years later, when we really set out to complete the project, I decided to go back to Westminster without the support of Life Magazine. I was kind of on my own and it didn't really work out. After only getting one dog at the second Westminster shoot, we realized we had to amp things up. So we found an all breed show up in Saratoga Springs, New York. We got a tent, we got portable lighting, and we were really, really eager to get going. Because we were outside, there were unexpected issues. The wind was blowing, the set paper was booming, and it sounded like thunder. So the dogs were scared, but we got some incredible, incredible photos. Some of my favorites from the book. I got 14 dogs in Saratoga Springs that I loved, but we still had 139 to go. I remember my publisher, Stacy Wakefield, saying to me, if this project were easy, somebody else would have done it already. We hit the jackpot with a breed awareness event that happened at this huge convention center in New York City. I had the space that I needed to make the pictures that I wanted to make. I had a team of volunteers talking to the dog owners and getting them to participate in the project. We had the organization down at this point. We had huge lists of the dogs that we needed to get to complete the project. 86 down, only 53 to go. The fewer dogs we needed to complete the project, the more difficult it became to find those dogs. It was the rarer breeds that we didn't have. We went up to Westchester County, New York, we waited all day to get the 29 dogs that we ended up photographing for the project. With only 24 breeds to go, my publisher, Stacy and I set out to York, Pennsylvania for an eight-day dog show. We brought our own dogs, my dog Snack, her puppy Muggsy, and we finally photographed the last dog, the Wirefox Terrier. <laughs> 